am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to God except by me. There is no alternative. Hello everyone, it's good again to have you with us today on View from the Top. Uh, thank you so much for taking out time to follow us on this. I believe you've found it very, very useful like I have. And I believe you have been exercising yourself in, you know, practicing what the Bible says about how we should live right, how we should live for God in this corrupt society. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please, I would encourage you to do so. Also, like and comment. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear how you have imbibed um, this biblical principles that we are teaching. We'd like to hear are there any challenges or even if you have a different opinion that is scripturally based we like we really, really like to hear from you uh it's been two episodes so far and today we are continuing on that same topic that is a question asking what are christians supposed to do in a corrupt world so i'd like to welcome again as usual pastor Dele on this topic you are welcome sir Good thank to you. Have you yes sir you're welcome welcome everyone in the studio Welcome viewers at home. Thank you. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Last week we ran it off at the point we said one of the things we need to do as a church, as in Christians, is to preach biblical salvation, which emphasizes grace, which is an empowerer of people to do the will of God. Without grace, we are left with no power to do the will of God. Because the Bible says the flesh warred against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. The two of them are cry to each other, so you cannot satisfy God in the flesh. It's not possible. That's Galatians 5, 16 to 17. Praise God. So, we need grace. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So when people are left with just their natural moral abilities, that's how far they can go in not being corrupt. You need that supernatural impute to help you to lift you from the realm of what men can handle to the realm that what only God can handle through you. You remember he said in Philippians, that's true there about. He said it is God that walketh, that's 13, 2, 13, that walketh in us both to will and to do of his will. He's working in you, praise God. But you have to tap into it by faith, believing what God has said, that you are able to live above it. Praise God. You may not see the, 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 the experience in one day, but as you insist, as you operate in it by faith, you see that you are growing. You, you are growing in integrity. You are growing in faithfulness. You are growing in everything contrary. You are growing in integrity. You are growing in everything contrary to pollution, contrary to corruption. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's how we keep growing. Hallelujah. So, grace is very critical. The Bible, I think we should preach biblical, biblical salvation. Yeah. In Romans 1 16, the Bible says, uh, well, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is what? The power of God. It is what? The power of it God. It is what? The power of God. What if the gospel here is not the gospel of? The power of God. The gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What if we had is not the gospel of Christ? No power. No power. Do you see that? So it has to be the, the gospel of Christ. Hmm. He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that be made. First to the group, to Jews, the Jews, then first to, and the also Greek. to the Greek. Praise God. Amen. And that will take me to Acts chapter 26, 16 to 18, where Paul was narrating his uh, experience with Jesus when he met him on the way to Damascus to Agrippa, 16 to 18, Acts 28. King James. Yes, go ahead. But rise and stand upon thy feet. He's now quoting what Jesus told him. Yeah, yes. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Delivering Now thee, give the, the attention now. This is where we are going. Yes. Delivering thee from, from the, the people, people and from the Gentiles, okay. unto whom now I send thee. To open their eyes. To open their eyes. Look at the mandate. I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes. That means they are blind. Hello? Amen. So no wonder they are corrupt. For you not to be blind, you must see. 
I'm sending you to open your eyes, yes? And to turn them from darkness to light. So that means they're in darkness. <laughs> to turn them from darkness to what? Light. You are going to do it. Yes, I walk through you, but I need you to be my proxy to get the job done. And our mandate is not different. Go ahead. And from the power of Satan unto God. From the power of Satan unto God. So there's a power that is holding them down in corruption. Mm. That we cannot by mere morality break. We need another power that is greater than their power. That power that we need is the power of God in the gospel. Amen. So when somebody has not had the gospel of Christ, though he has had the gospel, he has had gospel. It will be lacking that power to break the power of that darkness of Satan over his own life and over the lives of those are hearing. That's it. I'm trying to show you the relevance of preaching biblical salvation in dealing with the issue of corruption in society by the church or by the Christians. Mm. Do we see that? Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. I can as well jump from there. Now, but next, what should the church do? There must be proper discipleship. Part of the problem we have is that discipleship has become old school. In the world of microwave, everything must be right here and now. And that is never how discipleship is done. Nobody gives attention to details. Nobody is willing to learn the ropes. Everybody is CEO hmm. before he leaves school. Yes, sir. Not after. Mm -mm. He has business card. CEO, the course is still learning. <laughs> it is in the generation I see people who say they are consultants in businesses they have never been involved in. <laughs> eh? You have never seen? It's very common. You see, I'm a consultant, so so so. And you are trying to find out what is his experience. Mm. He's just a consultant. Mm. <laughs> just like that. It just imagined. Praise God. <laughs> That's the generation we, we are living in. So how do you expect such a people to go through discipleship? And who will even disciple them? People that are not discipled. Hmm. Only a disciple can raise a disciple. Hmm. And that lost art has to be rediscovered in the church. If we are going to represent God the way he wants us to represent him. Some people have good hearts. People keep having good hearts. But good art is not enough. There is the need for everyone who is following Christ to be discipled. Jesus was not stupid when he discipled the twelve. He could have discipled the Holy Spirit. So discipleship is not attending church. In the church of 300, who is your disciple? My pastor. Okay. I hear you. In the church of 10 million, who is your pastor? Ah, our papa. He's the one disciple. You don't need your discipleship. For to disciple somebody is more than teaching you Bible. It's teaching you life. That's a disciple. You are learning life of Christ through that person. More than talk. You see him undo circumstances and situations. You see him live under different situations and circumstances. And you are learning how a Christian ought to behave, ought to respond, ought to deal with issues, ought to talk, ought to conduct and comport himself under different situations. It's more than classroom work. He didn't say raise students. The word disciple in the Greek is not student, it is pupil. Hmm. A pupil does not learn subject, he learns the teacher. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. It is a wrong translation anywhere you see that it, that word is translated student. It's not student, it's pupil. Go and check it in the Greek. Thank God everything is open now. It's a pupil. A student is too wise to be a disciple. He can choose what to believe and what not. He's too smart. <laughs> pupil is learning everything. Like the scripture says in Vision 4, you have not so learnt Christ. Hmm. Listen, you have not so learnt of Christ. You have not so learnt Christ. You are learning Christ. You are not learning what he says. You are not trying to cram scriptures. You are learning Christ. 
Are you getting me? That was why when Peter was going to be his disciple, he said, Master, where dwelleth thou? It's more than meeting in church. Hello. Amen. <laughs> Jesus was just going to have them say, No, no. My fault were bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. Where dwellest thou? Is there some of us know uh, that place you don't get? So good, they live together. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's discipleship. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Who has time for that? Who is willing to disciple? Who is willing to be discipled? Because it is then you will see the practicality. Things you have been reading the Bible, you see people that have gone ahead of him. They are not perfect. But you can see that these things are doable by the ground they have covered, which you have not. So that will give you encouragement that look, it's possible, it's doable. Let's go for it. And you see the tactics as it applies, even when you are not conscious, you are learning lessons of life. Praise God. But everybody see you. May the Lord help his church. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, from any version apart from King James. King James said, go out and teach all nations. That is not the perfect rendering of that. That's why you can hardly see it in any other rendition. That is supposed to be make disciples. Because when you say teach, you could as well go to classroom or do Sunday school. What Jesus is saying there is not Sunday school. It's not mental work. Make disciples. Read it. Okay. Um, Anyone you like, classic. apart from King James. Jesus approached. Which one is that? Amplified Classic. Okay. Verse 19. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything. You see now, make disciples. Teaching is only a subset of making disciples. Yeah. Do you see the, the difference between what King James said and this one says? It's teaching. It's a subset. Oh, we sit down, you know, the Bible says, Bible says in Luke chapter 5, verse 3, and Matthew 8, verse 20, mm. and the rest of them. But there's more to discipleship than all of that. Discipleship is apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is closer to discipleship than schooling, than being a student. It's apprenticeship. When you're an apprentice, how much of classroom work do you do? It is hands on and what you can observe. And you do more than what you are learning. You wash your gas clothes. You learn how to baby feed. Babysit the children of you know you are, it's all it's the whole of your life is affected. That is discipleship. You learn how to apply the scriptures that you only have in your head as you work with those who have gone ahead of you. If we continue to have discipleship as lost heart in the body of Christ, we will not fail to have this crisis that we are having. Hmm. Jesus was not stupid when he had disciples. Hmm. And discipling is not mere church attendance. So then that's as his own part. Discipleship is more than church attendance. Praise God. Amen. Number next. Message says, go out and train everyone you meet. Becca. Far and near in this way of life. Uh -huh. marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice You see that instruction is just, that's teaching. It's coming as a subset yeah. of discipleship. So if you just say, go and teach them, you could teach them and not make disciples of them. And that is what we are seeing all over the place. And that's why all these things are continuing. What next can the church do? Can a Christian do? Be an example in your space. Be an example in your, space. in your space. You have a place of work. You have a neighborhood where you live. You have a family from where you come. You have people you relate to. Be an example of lack of corruption. You are contributing your quota. But the question is, what can a Christian do in a corrupt society? Be the example of what you're doing. Have you ever seen people that leave a church and say because there's no love in that church? <laughs> if you have so much love, why can't you stay and teach us? Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. You should have, if you have enough love, you should take our stupidity and our lack of love, because you have love, then you teach us how to love rather than run. 
All right? Mm. <laughs> so be an example in your own space. Don't say how much impact can I have. You leave that to God. When they had no food, he said, what do you have? He said, we don't have anything. He said, no, no, you go and check. Yeah. I said, we have told you there is nothing. He said, it's only two fish and uh, five, five loaves of bread. He said, bring it. More than enough. That that you have is more than enough for him. To but Amen. you must surrender it to him. You can't hold it and say it's not enough. It's too small. Don't make Jesus headache your own. That's his own headache. He's the one that asks for what you have. If it's one naira you have, give him. Don't say, ah, <laughs> you are too big for this. He's the one that's asking you to bring it. Mm. Give him and see what you make out of it. Mm. So don't say, oh, what can I do? <laughs> oh, that is why, that is what I deceive many people to go into politics, even when God is not sending them. They, it's not because they want to go and embezzle money. They feel that, ah, we have more impact if, ah, if I have access to the... If, uh, to all the paraphernalia of government, I will not be able to. He doesn't know that what is behind six is more than seven. <laughs> How do you get there? That we count on what you can do when you get there. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you believe personally. Mm-hmm. Can you do everything alone by yourself? Mm-hmm. Hello? <laughs> so at the end of the day, you realize that this person made all the promises of heaven and earth. Used to be a fantastic system, but when he got there, everything changed. So that's why we have to be educated. We have to provide this thought. Be an example where you are. do what you can with what you have. You see, you see from, from where you where are. You have. Praise God. Mm-hmm. So be an example in your space. Let's see, let's see an example. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. New Living Translation is better. Daniel 6, verse 4. New Living Translation. Daniel 6, 4. The Bible says. Every of the leaders there were envious of him because of his position. That it was God that gave him more. People know the they know the fear. How can you a man that did did not even ask God for it? God just and you have the boldness to be envying him. People have mind. <laughs> Praise God. So they were looking for what to use against him to bring him down. May you not be found working against God though. No, God works in proxies. May you never be found working against God. Look at Paul when he was saw. He said, So, so, who are thou, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Did he ever persecute Jesus personally? May you not be found persecuting God's saints. Amen. Go ahead. Daniel 6 4, NLT. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some faults in the way Daniel was handling government They do hear that. They checked all the receipts, all the papers to check whether there was inflated contract or fake receipts. Or he awarded contract to a company that was not qualified that he had interest in. What did the Bible report? But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. Wait. Their job, what they set out to do, was to find fault. How many of us can? I don't think I can stand this. (laughs) You don't understand. Mm -hmm. They checked everything, including whether it went late to work. Yes, sir. Everything (laughs) in the way it was running the affairs of the government. Mm. They couldn't find anything. You know, human beings are good at negative things. Yes, yes now. And they couldn't find. It. They couldn't even find something they can use and they blow up. Not just condemn, but criticize. 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 They couldn't find. That was a light. That was hot. That was a fresh of breath air. In this squalid and what? A squalid and perverse generation. Mm. squalid and polluted world that was what it was it was integrity personified hello Amen. integrity what personified the opposite direct opposite of uh, corruption, corruption. Mm. they couldn't find it even between where you walk to this studio and now you could trace some element of corruption <laughs> 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 you couldn't find anything in this guy and these were people that lived under the old covenant. 
and to challenge. Yes, sir. I said, be an example in your own space. That's what I'm trying to reiterate. Finish it up. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. That means he was deserving of the trust conferred on him. The authority given to him, he, he used it, it as expected. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. When he needed promotion for his brothers, he got it legally. Yeah. It was not by nepotism or favoritism. He got it legally. He made a case for them and the king stamped it. Can that be said of many of us? If you're asking what she can do, these are the things you can do. Be an example, like Daniel, in your space. Hallelujah. Next, what can the church do? The church, especially the ministers and the children of God, should preach the severity of corruption as seen by God. All right? Treat corruption as severely as God sees it and let others know how severely God views corruption. I'll give you a few examples, few scriptures to show you how God detests corruption. Isaiah 5, 20 to 30. I would like for us to take from the message version. Isaiah 5, 20 to 30. I'd like for us to take from the message version. Do Listen to, to this please carefully. Go ahead. Doom to you who call evil good and what good is that? evil. That's corruption. Who puts darkness in place of light? That's corruption. And light in place of darkness. Who substitutes bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? Doom to you who think you are so smart. Who holds such a high opinion of yourselves? How your good heart is drinking. Champion boozers. Who collects trophies from drinking boats? And when line... And then line your pockets with bribes. Line your pocket with what? Bribes. Go ahead. From the guilty, while you violate the rights of the innocent. That is abuse of your position, of authority conferred on you. That is corruption. Yes? But they won't get by with it. You use the authority conferred on you for private gain. The bribe comes to you. To your pocket. At the expense of the right thing to do. This is what God is angry against. Go ahead. But they won't get by with it. Did you hear that? That's a promise from God. Hmm. They won't get by with it. Yes? As fire eats stubble and dry grass goes up in smoke, their souls will atrophy. Hmm. Their achievements crumble in dust because they said no to the revelation of God of the angels' Hermes. Would have nothing to do with the Holy One of Israel. That's why God flamed out in anger against the God people. flamed out. It is he was angry. I want to see the little He flamed out. That means it was fiery anger. Anger like fire. He flamed out in anger. And what happened? Against his people. Against his people. Reached out against, and knocked them down. Against? His people. Against? God's people. Go ahead. Reached out and knocked them down. <laughs> the mountains trembled as their dead bodies piled up in the streets. Why? Because they were corrupt. But even after that, it was the still The police did not arrest them. EFCC could not catch them. But God said, I won't have that in my kingdom. Mm. Go ahead. But even after that, it was still hungry. His fists still raised. Hello? <laughs> did you hear what he has done? He has lined up the streets with their dead bodies. Yet, God was not done. <laughs> His fists still raised, ready to eat them again. <laughs> he raises a flag, signaling... A distant nation, weasels from people at the ends of the herd, and here they come, on the run. None drag their feet, no one stumbles, no one sleeps or dawdles. Shirts are on the pants buckled. Shirts are on, are on and pants, and pants buckled. buckled. Every boot is pit polished the and tied. God was bringing mm. to come and destroy the rest. Mm. Go ahead. Their arrows are sharp, bows strong. The whole After the streets are being lined with dead bodies. This was going to happen again, yes? The hooves of their horses should. Chariots wheeled greased. Roaring like a pride of lions. 
the full-throated roars of young lions. They growl and seize their prey, dragging it off. No rescue for that one. <laughs> they will roar and roar and roar on that day, like the roar of ocean billows. Look, is the roaring of lion alone not enough to kill somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Say they will roar and roar and roar, and roar. And roar. before now devouring. So they die, kill them before they die. <laughs> Just because they were corrupt. Go ahead. Look as long and hard as you like, as you, as you like at the land. You'll see nothing but darkness and trouble. Even lights in the sky Every light will in be the sky blacked out be blacked by out. the clouds. Have you ever had anything as serious as this against corruption in your life? No. So the church has to make people aware how much God detests corruption. That's part of the job. Ezekiel 22. 12 to 14. Common English version. Is it 22, 12 to 14? CV. Verse 12. Others of you accept money to murder someone. Your own people charge high interest when making a loan Are to murder Israelites. And they get rich by cheating. Worst of all, you have forgotten me, the Lord God. Mm. I will shake my fists in anger at your violent crimes. When I'm finished with you, your courage will disappear. And you will Everybody be that so that, weak. What is this? What is this? I will bribe the judge. This judge cannot be bribed. I will steal enough so that we have enough to bribe judge mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. enjoy the rest. Mm -hmm. But this judge cannot be bribed. Mm -hmm. So when I'm done with you, all your confidence will vanish. And you'll be so you'll weak like jellyfish. that you won't be able to lift your hands. Mm. Hi, the Lord, I've spoken and will not change my mind. Mm. I will scatter you throughout every nation on earth and put a stop to your sinful ways. You will be humiliated in the eyes of other nations. I think you don't do it too fast. <laughs> then you will know that hi, the Lord, I've done those things. Can you see how seriously God sees corruption? How many issues does God treat this way? This fiercely. These are the things we joke around with. And we don't know how God sees it. Praise God. Amen. Let's move on from there. Next thing, what can God what can a Christian do in dealing with corruption in the society? You have to exemplify and teach the fear of God. Exemplify the fear of God and teach it. Proverbs 8, 13, TPT. Okay. Proverbs 8, 13, TPT. TPT. Proverbs 8, 13. Wisdom pours into you when you begin to hate every form of evil in your life. For that's what worship and fearing God is all what, about. What is fearing God? Hating worship, every form of worship evil. Worship and fearing God is all about what? Hating, hating every form of evil in your life. He said, when you begin, you are the one to initiate it. Hello? You are to initiate it. You are to take the decision. It is a conscious decision to hate it. It, needs, it didn't say it become naturally because you are following God. Per se. You can, you can choose not to mind even when God is hating it through you. But you have to submit yourself. To see the way God sees it. For this to happen to you. He said when you begin to hate. How do you put this? When you, when you begin to hate every form of evil. Every form of evil. In your life. All forms of corruption. That is. That is. For that's what worship and fearing and God fearing is God all is. about. The fear of God is to depart from sin. So when you exemplify that. You are making a point to the society. So when you vocalize it, they know you have a grand. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when I say vocalize, now you are not trying to show holier than thou. Mm -mm. We are just saying, look, this is the way to live. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Should I finish it? Finish it off. 
then you will discover that your pompous pride and perverse speech are the very ways of wickedness that I eat. Proverbs 16, 6, Amplified Classic. We are talking about exemplifying and vocalizing about the fear of God. Encouraging others to also fear. When you fear God, then you can encourage others in the society, especially in the house of God, to imbibe the same. Then you are contributing to the society positively mm. against corruption. Yes. By mercy and love, truth and fidelity to God and man, not by sacrificial offering. Not by big tithe and offering. Yes. Iniquity is purged out of the heart. And by the reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord, men depart from and avoid evil. So, it's, it's men that take those decisions. It's a conscious effort. So when we begin to do that, that's the fear of God. And that's what we are saying we can do. In doing what? In contributing to sanitizing our society from all forms corruption. of pollution or corruption. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What else can be done? Apart from all that we have said, I've said that we should take church discipline very seriously, but lovingly against corruption of all sorts, from pulpit to pew. It's not just about members. It must start from there, from up there. From pulpit to pew, we must take church discipline seriously. There should not be secret cow when it comes to corruption. If the pastor is guilty, let him face the consequence. If the elder is guilty, let him face the consequence. If members of the assembly is guilty, let him face it equally. There shall not be sentiment in dealing with discipline in the house of God. That is what has made corruption to be the culture, a culture now in the house of God, rather than as an evil that it really is. Praise God. Amen. Taking it seriously is very critical. And then we also talk about that. As we run down, as we run down, one other thing that you can do as a Christian is to pray. You see, I deliberately put prayer last. <laughs> because I know that's the easiest thing. We are prayed. God will do it. God will do it and we are doing it. When you have done all this, then you have a local standing before God. You can have, say, Lord, you now identify yourself with the people that are not doing it. In God's presence. We have sinned. Though you have not been corrupt. Whether we are a corrupt people. Have mercy on us. That is intercession. Praise God. You pray for the believers. And you pray for the society. You pray for believers that the light of God will shine through them. Into the society. You pray for the rest of the society. Based on 1 Timothy 2. 1 to 4. Can we just read that? Okay. Which version? CV message? Anyone? Okay. Um, CV. First of all, I ask you to pray for everyone. Ask God to help and bless them all. And tell God how thankful you are for each of them. Pray for kings and holders in power so that they may live quiet and, peaceable and peaceful lives as we worship and honor God. This kind of prayer is good and it pleases God as Savior. God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth. Thank you. Based on that scripture, you pray for the society. Based on God asking his children to go and be light out there, you pray that the light of God, more of God's light, will shine through his people into the society. Those are the conditions you can make to a society that is corrupt as a believer. But I want to leave some serious caveats here. I'm not saying the church cannot do anything until we are perfect ourselves. I keep saying we are work in progress. And that we have to acknowledge. And we don't have to pretend to the world that we are there. When we miss it, let them know we miss it. They will know when we are doing what we ought to do, though we are not perfect. Praise God. And there's no need to pretend. So I'm not saying that we have to be perfect before we can play any positive role in the society. That's not what I'm saying. Neither should we say, oh, we'll be waiting for one church that is 100% corruption free to emerge. And say that church should not change you. What is church? Is it not you and I? Yeah. So when I'm changing, I'm changing the church. Yeah. I don't have to be pastor. I don't want to be elder. I don't want to be deacon. I don't want to be member of the choir. If I'm changing and I'm a child of God and I'm representing God better, 
I am actually contributing to society on the behalf of the church. So I'm not waiting for one church to, to just emerge from nowhere. We are the ones that make the church. But if we are, we are all, you know, that's the mentality. Oh, let them do something about this thing now. Who are the them? The them starts with me. Praise God. Those are the things I think we should do as believers to change what is happening around us, to make this place, to make the light of God to permeate into the darkness of this world. God has given us that light. All we need to do is to release it, let it shine through us into the dark world so that there will not be works of darkness, I mean, having dominion over us and over our society where we live. Praise the Lord. Amen. I pray the Almighty God will help us and bless His church. And bless you all. Amen. For taking us, for being with us through this series. God bless you. See you some other time. Wow, wow, wow. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. This message is enlightening. It is challenging. And it is instructive. And I believe that we are all challenged like I am. But the beautiful part is that we have what it takes. God has given us what it takes and is right there to help us. Uh, we don't have to wait until we are perfect. We can start from where we are. We are work in progress. But we, while we are work in progress, we can be working in progress. And we can start from where we are, doing what we can, you know, using what we have. And that thing we consider small. What can I do? In the world of seven billion people, what can I do? That thing we consider small, God, if we surrender it to God, it would magnify it and use it in measures that even we be we will be amazed. So uh, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us on this journey. I believe you've been blessed. I believe you're going to start taking steps. This is so practical and there are things we can start doing right away. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Thank you so much. Do remember to like, to subscribe, to share your comments with us. And we'll see you again next week. God bless you. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man can come to God except by me. There is no alternative. 